back. Our mountains of snow this winter have left behind some unexpected consequences. Rabbits, voles, and deer had to scavenge for food, and they turned to trees and shrubs and our grass, leaving behind plenty of damage. We found some surprises under the snow. Garden Guy DLK is live with a look at what you can do to repair some of the damage in your yard. I've learned a lot about voles, Dale, and I did not want to know about voles. <laughs> <laughs> You're lucky we're going we're gonna to talk about those, but Good. of course a lot going on in gardens because, uh, because of that thick blanket of snow is one of those really harsh winters. So hang in there if you're having problems. We'll start to solve some of them right now. Talked about rabbits right off the bat, one of those creatures that has really made its home here in the metro and really throughout the whole state. So let's take a look at some of that damage that you're seeing in your gardens and if it is rabbit damage. First off, there's girdling that is kind of that damage that kind of goes all the way, all the way around the trunk. Um, that's probably the most severe of the different types of damage that rabbits do. The other one, the telltale sign, really deer or rabbits, is nice clean cuts on on all your branches and oftentimes that goes all the way back down to the ground so if you've got that going on in your back garden here's the solutions for what you can do for rabbits and i guess really prevention is better than cure so in the fall make sure that you put a physical barrier between your prized landscaping you can do that with hardware cloth or with um, poultry wire, something of that net, uh, something of that nature. Also, they make these kind of tree plastic tree guards that go around the trunk, so that will stop those critters from gnawing at the bark. Now, what you can do in the spring. Um, is actually fertilize your plants when it gets a little bit warmer out. Uh, that will be great for them. And really, the damage is done, so depending on how your plants leaf out will really determine what damage is done. But the girdling is the toughest one to overcome, so as the weather warms up and everything leaves out, if, if your plants don't leaf out, then you know that damage was severe. And of course, uh, using a taller wire because as the snow, as we get the snowpack increases, the rabbits just naturally get taller. So little ones like this, these are okay in season, but for over the winter, it can be a little bit tougher. There are, of course, lots of different types of repellents on the market. For, for the prevention, I like the granular versions the best. They, because of the liquids will, of course, freeze. So this is for in season. These are for over the winter. Uh, I think this is probably, this one probably works the best in my experience. It's nothing scientific. It's just my own personal preference. This one works pretty good. This one here, it's by Repellex. Uh, this is a systemic. So what it does is it actually goes throughout the plant system. So you get about a year's worth of protection with this one. You'll pay a little more for this. And then this is probably the most popular uh, brand out there actually nationally but again for a winter protection you want to use the granules because these will freeze okay we had a lot of winter uh, storm damage as well particularly the last heavy wet snow we've had it we had a couple of them over the over the winter months and uh, the last one I know in my backyard just almost totally decimated my yard it almost looked like a little mini twister went through lots of branches down and uh, I know if you're in Woodbury you had a lot of damage over that way as well so for the most part, just good proper uh, pruning with clean cuts is best. The solution, uh, if you're worried about any breaks, there's a little bit of tree uh, wound dressing that you can paste into cracks. That does a good job. But what I like to do is basically let the plants actually kind of breathe or let those wounds heal just with, with Mother Nature and air. If you're worried about bugs and things getting in, you can just put a little, it's almost like a bandage, I guess. It's a breathable trap, that's a breathable breathable, breathe there, breathable wrap that you can wrap around your plants. This is different than the one in the fall. So uh, that's the solution there. And then finally, voles and kind of when that blanket of snow disappears, it's kind of like the greatest game of hide and seek. It's like, what's happened to my lawn this winter? And as that recedes, you end up with snow mold, uh, you'll see that, that's that very compaction. It has almost like a little bit of a pink tinge to it initially. And then there are the voles. They're different than moles. 
Voles are the ones that leave those little tracks and trails like you see there throughout your lawn. And it's basically just a little field mouse, or no, it's not little, it's actually a big field mouse uh, that kind of chomps on the roots as it's kind of scavenging for food. Oftentimes they're after grubs as well that are in your lawn. So if you have grubs in your lawn or you live next to the woods, oftentimes you'll have voles. So the solution there is quite simple and it really you can end up with lawn damage from from pets from you know plowing your driveway or having the city you know uh, mess up your lawn so really whatever the damage vole snow mold uh, you name it basically a little bit of repair I pay a lot more attention to soil temperature than air temperature when timing is right and actually it's a little spongy right here the ground's a little wet so I like to make sure it firms up a little bit there's no real excess moisture in the ground before I start repairing but when soil temperatures and you, you can buy a little soil thermometer like this one um, or a cooking thermometer when soil temperatures are in that 65 degree range for an extended period of time that's great for reseeding cool season grasses um, so having a good uh, lawn mix or a good seed mix is key. Uh, make sure you have about five different varieties in there that will create some uh, wonderful resilience from not only drought but also disease as well. And they're basically um, to get rid of all those little tracks and, and snow mold and all that kind of stuff. A little bit of raking. This is a groundskeeper rake. It has these very narrow tines. Um, it's very good for getting rid of dead grass. Do that, get some soil showing, and then go ahead and reseed. And then finally, as the table crashes, you can put this down in the fall for prevention of moles. With that, we'll send it back to you. That sounds like a horror movie. Bowl <laughs> scream? <laughs> All right. Scram. Uh, scram. Oh, I thought it was, you know, <laughs> it's the Australian version, but okay. Uh, like scram, okay. get away. That makes more sense. We've All got right. some work to do. <laughs> yeah, we do. Thanks, Dale.